Representative would like to recognize the gentle lady from New York, Ms. Maliotakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'll say as a New Yorker and Yankee fan, it's exciting to be here in the birthplace of Mickey Mantle. Um, when, you know, when we talk about Made in America, we are talking about you, right? American manufacturers, American farmers, uh, food producers, American energy producers. And we have a president who talks a lot about Made in America. Uh, but what I'm hearing today is that the policies there's a real disconnect between what he says and the policies that are coming from this administration. Because what I've heard today is that higher taxes, burdensome regulations, permitting delays, the disincentivizing of work have all made it more difficult for you to create jobs. It's made it more difficult for you to create American jobs, let's be specific. Uh, and produce more American goods, uh, forcing us to rely on foreign countries, particularly as it pertains to energy. Uh, and I want to focus on the energy policy because we rely on energy for everything, to manufacture, to transport goods and food, uh, to have a quality of life where we can have electricity that's reliable. Um, and I'm from New York City, and sometimes in New York City we don't always think about where that energy comes from, right? We just turn on the lights, we pull up at the gas pump, we go in the store, we buy our food. We never think about where it's actually produced or how it's produced. Um, but lately, my constituents are paying a lot more attention because they're getting those higher utility bills. They're seeing that you know, gas prices are more today than they were two years ago. Um, and they're seeing that you know, that transportation of food is actually driving the price of, of their products up at the supermarket. So I'd love to ask Mr. Brevetti if you can comment on how much more is the potential for American energy production here in Oklahoma and America, how much more potential is there for us to be energy independent and, as you said, not rely on adversaries. It's important for our national security. It's important for our independence. And it's important to reduce prices for American families. And my second question would be, how are Biden's uh, policies hindering that production and, in the end, increasing the cost of energy and food for my constituents back home in New York? Um, both. Both great questions, and um, you know, typically we recover about 20 percent of the oil in place. We maybe get a little bit more on natural gas, you know, 50 to, to 75. So we're leaving a lot of, of hydrocarbons in the ground, um, and technology will help us recover those. So it's not going to go away. We're going to be able to develop that, and that's going to be able to help the consumer. Um, <clears throat> from the uh, standpoint of your second question, what can be done? I mean, you know, one of the things is, is pipelines. You know, uh, I think your, your, uh, your home state has blocked pipelines going through them, and we have such tremendous gas reserves that are in the Appalachian area. And so that gas has to come here. That gas comes through, and Oklahoma gas has to compete for space in the pipelines, whereas that gas could go to the East Coast and, and be made into LNG, sent overseas. Uh, it could be used to heat the homes there and help people flourish. You mentioned something interesting. When you mentioned pipeline, I automatically thought about the Keystone Pipeline, right, which would have created thousands of jobs, in, including here in Oklahoma. Um, how is the cancellation of the Keystone Pipeline affecting American workers here? And how is it also sending a message that disincentivizes private investment <coughs> to expand the energy industry here? Well, it did all that. It, it was a job killer, as we aware, the cancellation of the Keystone. Um, it also kind of slapped our, our, one of our best allies, our, our closest, our neighbor to the north, in the face. You know, there was so much investment done. This was a way for uh, Canada to be able to uh, market their products to a place where they have a product, we have consumers. Um, and I, I will uh, point out that there is not a safer way to move oil than in a pipeline. Uh, I think we've seen what's happened with railroads here lately. A lot of oil gets moved by railroads, and that's not safe. Um, so, yes. Is uh, American energy, or American oil, I should say, is it dirtier than Russian oil or Venezuelan oil or, or Saudi Arabian oil? 
Iranian oil? You know, that's a good question. Without getting down into the weeds, uh, most of American crude being produced right now is what's called fairly light and sweet. It's low in uh, H2S. Uh, which makes it sour, it's also fairly light compared to those countries you mentioned, such as Venezuela. And when you, when you produce crude in a foreign country, it's not produced as clean and safely, but now you have to move it on tankers, and that has a carbon footprint for sure. So American oil is cleaner, and it costs less to transport, and it's cleaner to transport. Cleaner, safer, and nobody produces hydrocarbons in a more environmentally and greener fashion than U.S. producers. Thank you.